Hey everyone, welcome to Nonstop Food. Today we're gonna cook a quick ghetto Asian style meal with leftover rice. Yeah, we saw a video about uh, cooking rice with a waffle maker. I know, and this is a Hello Kitty waffle maker. Look how pretty it is. Oh. You have your leftover rice, you have your egg, you have some seaweed, soy sauce, and some furikake for some seasoning afterwards. I don't think we can really screw this up just because the ingredients are so easy. Whip your eggs with chopsticks. Spray some oil so it doesn't stick on my pan. Wow. Oh. Scoop the rice. They scoop the rice. Look at that. It's got like the little Hello Kitty. Mm, and it's gonna be riced. Oh, oh, oh. oh really? I need to control. Soy sauce. Each one for flavor. Go man, keep go man. Can you hear it? I can smell it too. First batch didn't work. Let's try this again. Rip There's first batch. <laughs> Spray it a lot. Like a lot. Oops. Oops. Oh, it's farting. I know. Like that now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so happy. Happiness. Wow. Happy. Use some uh, foodie kake now. Yeah. Hey, finally, we made the rice waffle work <laughs> with our cute little faces on there and if you actually look at the uh, back side of it it looks like a waffle <laughs> well it's supposed to be a waffle right i can't believe you can actually make a waffle out of rice that's kind of cool if you look at that waffle out of rice i will try this hello kitty waffle a small sure. one. I'm gonna try the small one too, actually. Mm. Yeah. Oh. No, mm. it tastes like fried rice. <laughs> it's, like, it's like omu rice. It is with like the furry khaki sprinkles on top. So, um, I need a little bit more sprinkle on mine. Not bad. It's it's a I guess cute way of. Using your leftover rice. Mmm. Want some cabbage tofu? Sit. Hen hen. Good boy. Mmm. 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 I like simple. Mm -hmm. I feel it needs a sauce though. I'm I'm like a sauce kind of person. Um. So I I almost feel like this is um. It could go well with okonomiyaki sauce. Oh, like the mayo sauce. Yeah, yeah, and that mm. like Worcestershire bulldog sauce. I see, yeah, you're right. I would put more soy sauce on there, but that's just me, I like soy sauce, and just like load it up with furikake. We have so many different types of furikake. There's like a salmon version, and then different rice seasonings. It usually comes with like um, seaweed, sesame, and salt and stuff. Yeah. So oh I actually wanted to uh, let you guys know I have been binge reading the webtoon Sweet Home. Oh my god, it's 141 chapters and I just read the entire series in one sitting. They have uh, a Netflix series too. Yeah, I, I heard about that. That's why I'm like, I usually 
when I see a series, I check if there's like a manga version or a webtoon series first before I watch it because I usually the the manga version is better. <laughs> so, What's it about? Um, it's where I guess it's the end of the world where all humans are actually infected with this some sort of I don't know if it's a virus or they're all infected and they're all starting to turn into monsters. <laughs> And these monsters are actually impossible to kill. So then um, the main guy wakes up in his apartment and uh, he finds that everyone else is kind of like, there's like half the people in the apartment are turning into these monsters and they're trying to survive. So now here's a question for you guys. If you're stuck in the scenario of like sweet home, we're in like a apocalyptic world where you know humans are turning into monsters and you're stuck in your apartment, you're running out of resources and food what would you do what what the hell like would you go and loot stuff and if you go and loot other apartment um, places like go scavenge for things what would you bring with you to go and um, scavenge and what would you actually scavenge for in the other apartments in the apartment building a waffle iron <laughs> a waffle <laughs> iron <laughs> i mean lucky for them they still had electricity right mm -hmm. so but i mean the electricity won't last for long like yeah. eventually everyone's gonna run out of food right so i think that's like the priority for everyone hey, spam spam yeah, you can never go wrong with spam because they last Eat forever it straight out of the can it lasts yeah. an eternity it tastes amazing. Right. I would actually like when if I'm leaving my apartment to try to scavenge in other people's apartments, I would bring some sort of backpack with me so I can like carry the stuff with me. Mm -hmm. Some sort of weapon, at least to protect myself. I mean, I actually don't really carry weapons in my house besides like, I guess, light stands <laughs> for <laughs> doing photo shoots and, and videos. So I might carry a light stand so I can like hit people with it. You're safer to have a long range combat than like a knife. You're, if you're up close to the monster and you have like a short knife, I think you have a smaller chance of survival because you're so much closer to the monster. <laughs> so yeah, I learned this trick from Train to Busan. Oh yeah. Where, like the tanky dude, in order to not get bit, he actually wrapped his arm with like a magazine and it duct taped oh. it. So it turned into armor. I thought that was genius. Because in the series, all the monsters all have different types of abilities. So I think some like slice things, some like eat things and some hit things. So I think definitely armoring up because you don't know what to prepare for if you have some sort of helmet <laughs> to wear that too, right? To protect your head. Uh, I don't like play any sports, so I don't have any like goalie helmets or anything but if you ride a bike i would wear a bike helmet at least man i think i would just be too scared to like leave to leave but what if you're <laughs> I would, starving i would pick up fasting and because i would think because some of the monsters are roaming in the hallways in the apartment right so i would think i would climb out from balcony to balcony because they're actually quite close to each other to break into someone else's apartment but there are monsters outside too so i think it really depends <laughs> there's like so many scenarios <laughs> So I would eat cup noodles for me. <laughs> but then if you're trying to pack, like, I guess you only have one backpack and you're scavenging, cup noodles actually are quite bulky and they take up a lot of space, right? But they're very light, so it's easy to move around in. I might get shut off because like after a while, <laughs> There you go. We got him back. Well, in this series, they actually had a Pomeranian in there too. And I was quite surprised, like, when the monsters hear like sound and stuff like that, so they're quite sensitive to sound and things like that. So it's okay. Tofu will scare them off. Okay. <laughs> He'll probably scurry off and hide under. A I table know. Or something. Yeah, he's pretty yappy though, and he's like, even though he's scared, he likes to pick on people not his own size, and then just run behind me afterwards. <laughs> You're all the monsters. Toilet paper is a hot commodity. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Yeah, toilet paper. Yeah, it can Air help. Air fresheners would be pretty good because if, if you're stuck in that room, in your room for like God knows how long, and there's no running water, you can't do laundry. Oh God, that's things, true. Things are gonna get pretty, pretty stanky. I feel like I feel like toilet paper can be used for like 
camouflaging yourself too. Toilet paper? Yeah, like a mummy. You just like wrap yourself around it. So, so you would just like fit in with the rest of the monsters? Yeah, you would. I don't know. I think they can kind of tell biologically if you're a monster or human, but... <laughs> but no, like you can use it for like first aid too if you like get hurt and you're bleeding, I guess. <laughs> Toilet paper? Oh, when I think of survival specialists, that just reminded me, you need a lighter. If you don't have fire, I, I don't know how to start fire but from scratch. I feel like I need to learn how to do that now. But like, if you have a lighter, you should be okay, right? <laughs> yeah. Don't they use need lighters to make like Molotovs and stuff like that? Yes. For like, you know, throwing at zombies and monsters. <laughs> <laughs> I would actually look for power packs, like battery chargers for my phone. <laughs> I gotta like take selfies and post when I scavenge people's rooms in the apocalyptic world. <laughs> Look at what I found today! Hey, I one more bite oh, of God. my rice waffles! This one looks like it's sad. <laughs> <laughs> this could be good post apocalyptic food too. And thanks guys for joining us today. Making, watching me wash, fail, making this rice waffle three times. <laughs> but actually it's pretty good. It's like omu rice, kind of onikiri style. So, and yeah, let us know what you think. Like, what would you do if you were stuck in like a post-apocalyptic world, like the scenario in Sweet Home, where there's just, everyone's just turning into monsters. How would you survive? And what kind of stuff would you scavenge for, for your survival? Thanks so much for joining us today and don't forget to like and subscribe on the bottom. And this is Vicky and Ben from Nomstar Food. Cheers!